Now let me tell y'all something about dreams. Listen up. Because this is something I found out a long time ago that goes against everything you see in a movie, on TV, or what your great-grandma may have told you when you were a kid. See, dreams don't happen overnight. <laughs> that ain't how it works. See, they come to you in the daylight. You got to be awake. Because, baby, you got to run dreams down. See, that chase, that chase, that chase is what we learn the most about ourselves. To take that extra step, that extra mile, that extra rep. Now, look, look here. You don't never know how long it's going to take or exactly what it'll look like when you get there. The only thing you know is you can never stop. So, question time. What's your dreams? What's your dream? Are you willing to do what it takes to make that dream a reality? <laughs> no, 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 no. See, not while you're sleeping, but every darn day you wake up. Muhammad Ali said I hated every one of those training sessions, but I said to myself, don't give up. He said I didn't want to do those, but I wanted to be heavyweight champion of the world. Athletics, the great athletes were not the most gifted. The great creatives, the great creative geniuses were not the most talented. This world is littered with geniuses who did nothing. The most successful entrepreneurs, creatives, humanitarians are people who, important idea, capitalized on the potential they had. Capitalization, important point, capitalization. You have what it takes. Like, what do you want in, in life? Like, what do you actually want? Not material, right? Not material. When it comes down to like a feeling of a vision that you see of yourself, what do you want and what's stopping you? Because that's what I'm asking myself right now. And that's what I've asked myself all the way up until this point. What's stopping me from getting what I want? For me, the answer has been myself. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. So start grieving now. So long as you have one foot in who you've always been and the other in who you want to be, your life is going to be an endless tug of war between those two people. And it's going to take one person to fully let go for the other one to thrive. Are you willing to give that up so your life can amount to something greater than what it is? I know you're scared to fully move on from your old life because you think you're going to miss out on something. I can promise you, you won't. The FOMO goes away. The desire to go back to your old habits goes away. The desire for your old relationships goes away. It all goes away because the result of pursuing your highest potential is so great that you're going to wonder how you even function doing things the way you did before. But only if you give up on your old self. Only if you fully commit to who you're trying to be. Because what you want for your life is too great for a half commitment. It's going to take everything. Do not compare yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of all joy. Comparison is the thief of all visions. If your journey was supposed to be just like theirs, that wouldn't make it your story. People that went through the specific trials and tribulations that you went through, they're going to need your example. Do not compare your journey to anybody else's. The issue is how. How do you make yourself take actions when you're afraid, when you're scared, when you're overwhelmed? How do you break bad habits? How do you break the negative thinking that is causing you to feel paralyzed? See, the problem for most of us is we think about what we need to do, but thinking won't change your life. The only way you're going to change your life or change your career or change your health is to take action. And so the reason why so many people get stopped by procrastination and stopped by fear and stopped by anxiety is because they never get past the part of just thinking about it. See yourself as an outstanding person. Remember, you always act on the outside the way you see yourself on the inside. So imagine that you already were the kind of person that you want to be. And then walk and talk and act exactly as if you were an outstanding sales star, an outstanding performer. 
95% of the way you feel about yourself, your emotional content, is determined by your inner dialogue, by the words going through your mind. So say things like, I like myself, I like myself, I feel terrific, I feel terrific. How's it going? Wonderful. How's life? Fabulous. How's the family? Terrific. In other words, be optimistic. Don't let them know they got you. Don't let them know they got you. You just got to keep on going no matter what the day is, no matter what the move is, keep going. God gave us everything to point forward, to go forward. And what we're doing is at a standstill, a stepping back, because we don't do that. We keep on walking, regardless of what they say, what they think, and how they feel. Nothing will ruin your chances of success more than refusing to improve yourself. If you can't ignore the noise, make the right decisions, or take action consistently, then just know that you're the one holding yourself back. So raise your standards and let go of the things that don't align with the person you want to become. Don't be discouraged when the results aren't there. Just keep showing up one day at a time. Everyone can have faith when everything is going well. But what about when everything is falling apart? Will you still have faith? When they stop believing in you, will you still have faith? When you're behind on your bills, will you still have faith? When you keep failing time after time, will you still have faith? Faith is the assurance of what you do not see. October, November, December. You've got three months left in the year and you have one of two choices. You can do what you've been doing year after year after year after year, which is literally nothing until January 1st when you have a spurt of motivation and you decide that you're gonna change your entire being and then you do it for two weeks and then those goals are never seen or heard of again. Or you can see the opportunity in front of you and take the next three months and commit to the actions that are going to produce that version of yourself. So that on January 1st, you're not sitting there looking in the mirror, disgusted and disappointed with who you've been and the fact that you've repeated this cycle over and over and over again. You can instead be proud of the fact that you took the initiative to change your actions before everyone said it was acceptable to do so. On January 1st, do you want to feel like you have to change your entire life again or do you want to feel that you can just keep on doing what you're doing success is the only revenge I want you to win so big that the people that didn't believe in you they don't even exist burning your haters eyes out torturing your haters with success they don't even exist you're letting them take up space in your head because you're using them as fuel I don't even think about them. success is the only revenge this is a matter of life or death. It's as simple as that. Everything you dream of, everything and everyone that you love is counting on what you do today. If you do not find the strength within yourself to prevail above evil's pitiful attempts of straying you away from your path, you will forever live a life of underachievement and normalcy. You will become stagnant and vulnerable, defeated, but you do not accept defeat. There is a fighting spirit within you. I know that you feel it. The life force behind your eyes, you cannot be defeated. Don't let next year come and you are in the same place you are in today. It is so easy to let time pass us by, it's moving so quick. But the only way to make sure you don't find yourself in that same spot is to do something different. Today, this week, this month. You have to have the mindset that with the highest risk, there's the highest reward. But understand that the first part of that is risk. You may not get what you're hoping to get, but you're gonna get something out of it. And whether it's what you intend on or what you don't, you'll learn that it's something that you need in order to get where you're trying to go. Almost when you least expect it, things will fall into place. You'll realize that what left was making space for what was about to arrive. The quiet let you hear the guidance and the unhappiness forced you to make a move. The unsettledness made you keep looking 
and the doors that closed turned you towards the ones that were opening. It was always part of the plan because every time you got it wrong, you were one step closer to getting it right. I want you to grab the moment. I want you to realize the moment of your greatness is at hand. This very second, it's at hand. You don't need to chase the moment. Become the moment that people chase. Become the person that they want to be around because when you are around, whatever your hands touch changes atmosphere. Begin to be the healing hand that people need. Begin to be the person that has lived through something so you can take others through something on how they can survive it. And then you will show how to thrive in your mess because that brings out your best. But there is something on the inside that must be triggered. What are you willing to pull it so that you can release what's inside of you? Let it be today. Let it be this very second. If you're on a run, go one extra mile because I'm pushing you and I'm calling for you to run this extra mile with you. I'm here for that. I'm speaking to that. If it's about lifting, then go one more rep because I'm here for you. I need you tested so I can pull out the best in you because there is greatness on the inside. But until that breaks open and it pulls on the outside, the rest of us don't know where greatness resides. You can change your life in one decision. I can get drunk, drive in a car, and change my life forever, right? I can happen like that. But it can happen just like that the other way. It's just that the outcome's delayed. That's the only difference. You can change your life today in this moment by making these decisions, and, the, and your life path will have veered. You will have changed direction. Your tree of, of life will move. It's just that it takes time for that new direction to bear fruit. Whereas you can poison the fruit in a second. You can kill a tree real fast. You just can't grow one real fast. But it doesn't mean that if a seed's planted and you're watering it, it's not growing. It just takes a second to get above the surface. How do you know that you're on your path? Because it disappears, that's how you know. How do you know that you're really doing something radical? Because you don't, you can't see where you're going. That's how you know. Mm -hmm. um, but everything you have lent on for your identity has gone. And so you are going to enter the uh, black contemplative splendors of self-doubt at the same time as you're setting out on this radical new path. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here and you must treat it as a powerful stranger. One thing I did wrong in my life was I tried for so many years to please people. And I did it at the expense of myself. I was leaving a lot in the tank. And, I, and when you do that, you stop living. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. Life gets better from here. You grow from this moment. You glow in this moment. You go forward from this moment. Life gets better from here. You're so stuck on focusing on what you're experiencing here that you never focus on what is there for you. What are you here to do? Are you here to kind of exist in this comfortably numb, interquartile range middle period thing of life? Or do you want to make some f***ing waves? I want to make some waves. I want to do something that I look back on and I go, yeah, I actually, I made that happen out of nothing. I had an impact, I left a dent. And that's not going to happen if you're sitting in good but not great. And that's fine for a lot of people, that that's probably not for you. And unfortunately, the Discomfort, which includes potentially letting go of a good life to risk getting a uncertain great life, is one of those prices that you have to pay. And that's why so few people do it. But if you want to do it, that's a step that you have to take.
You could boil down the problem with humans into one line. It's the fact that they're always taking the path of least resistance. They don't want to put effort, and it requires effort to strategize, to think of your opponent, to think of what makes them different. It takes strategy to think of what will persuade them, what will get people to join your cause. It takes effort to get outside of yourself to see how other people might view it. But we don't want to do that. We want to just be lazy and just assume that everyone's on our side. Life is not going to look like someone else's, and it's quite honestly not going to take the same amount of time as someone else either. And I think that is the hardest truth to swallow because we see someone our age, someone that looks like us, does things like us, and we think if they can do it and I fit those criteria, I check off those check boxes of who they are and how they are, I should be there. No. The life that you want to create is not that far out of reach. Like just like that, you can you can have the life that you want, but if you believe that you can't, you can. Your life and your growth has to be stored up before it shows up. So when you see somebody that's done something very well, they did just start practicing on that yesterday. You're never good the first time. They've been consistent. And because of their consistency, they've arrived to a level that begins to show and display growth and excellence. And that's what I want for you. You know, so many people look to their right and left or look at their peers or look at the people they grew up it with and decide what they want in life based on what other people want in life. So often the things we aspire to aren't even things we've even asked ourselves if we want to aspire to. It's just what everyone wants. This is your life. It's crucial that you design it as you see fit. A lot of us are asking for permission to do things we already have permission to do. We're waiting for the right opportunity, the right set of tumblers to fall in just the right order before we activate the things we're doing. Think of this, we're rivers, we're not reservoirs. And we're not here to store up all of neither our fears uh, nor our ambitions, but that we're rivers to let everything flow out into the world. But to say, you know what? I'm gonna move from thinking about it you're doing something about it. In life, folks, you cannot change your life unless you change something. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Of confidence is the foundation of everything that you want in life. Without it, you will always hold yourself back. You will continue to doubt your abilities and hesitate when opportunities arise. But when you have self-confidence, everything changes. You stop asking for permission to pursue your dream, your vision. Instead, you just go. You stop seeking validation from others because you already know your worth. Mastering self-confidence means learning to trust yourself even when no one else does. It means believing that you are capable of more even when the entire world is telling you to settle. And once you master this, I promise you there is nothing in this world that you cannot achieve. Because confidence, when it is real, cannot be shaken. Most people underestimate how necessary their existence is in the world. And as a result, assume a posture of resignation that leaves the world less than what it could be. Our lives are not random, they are not coincidences. We were all given these lives to make the world better. And I feel like most people underestimate how necessary they are. And as a result, they don't, they don't take their thoughts seriously. But if we truly ever tapped into the high value of our breath, and it would quite literally make the world a better place. Michael Jordan missed 26 game-winning shots. He lost the game for his team 26 times. You're gonna fuck up a lot. And you're gonna lose the, the game for your team a lot. But it ain't really about the ones that are the most talented. It's the ones that never fucking quit. And yeah, talent's a real thing. But if you combine talent with somebody who doesn't quit, well, what I'm saying to you is, you fucked up, all right? Okay, get up off the floor. If you could still breathe, if you could go like this and it's going, you're in the game, so just 
and play. Our brain attaches to negative things. We have to train it to look at the positive things. Stop asking the questions of what's wrong with this or what can be fixed. Start asking the questions of like, what's right about this? What opportunity is this failure going to show me? I'm telling you, just start thinking those thoughts. You gotta train your brain. It doesn't matter what challenges it is that you are facing there. It is the fundamental principle behind it that you do not run away. That you are open for everything that is being thrown at you. I didn't ask for an easy life. I take what comes. Well, what if I experience failure? Well, what if you experience fortune? And I want you to think about that because fear of failure and laughter and stumbling and things not working out often causes us not even to take the first step that creates the momentum. And as you know, small daily seemingly insignificant steps over time when done consistently lead to stunning results. And so often we won't take the first step because we're afraid of failure. What if I fail? Well, I'm suggesting to you, what if you win? Emotions are powerful. Sometimes it doesn't take much to alter your whole life direction. Number one, disgust. Powerful emotion. Disgust says, I had had it. See, that could be the day. The day you can say, I've had it. And whether you've had it with something small or something major, the day you can say, I've had it, may not be the day it ends, but the day it begins. Powerful day. You need to go to war with the demons inside your head. Go to war with that little voice inside your head that tells you that you'll never be anything, that you're not good enough. The voice in your head that wants you to be lazy, that wants you to be scared, that wants you to worry about what other people might think or what other people might say. The one that tells you, oh, you're just gonna do this tomorrow. The one that says today you can do whatever feels good, but tomorrow I'm gonna be a changed man. That is not a voice to negotiate with. That is not a voice to be influenced by. That is a voice that you declare war on. That voice does not deserve a seat at the table. If you do what it says, that voice will get louder and louder until it takes control. But if you do the opposite of what it says, it will get quieter and quieter until you don't hear it at all. Worst feeling in the world is to be facing death and to think, damn it, I've wasted my life. And I want people out there to realize that if you're 20s and your 30s, you don't want to reach that point. You don't want to waste your time and become 55, 58, have a stroke, face death. And what have you done? Nothing. You've moved from job to job. You tried this, you tried that with half an energy. You really have nothing to look back on. That's the worst feeling. It's not what you do, it's who you are. It's not what's going to get you there, it's what's going to keep you there. Do what's right, not what's easy. You know what I'm saying? It's not what you do, it's who you are, right? It's not what got you there, it's what's gonna keep you there. Do what's right, not what's easy. Do you know that the lotus, one of the most beautiful flowers, grows in a swamp? We've all heard of post-traumatic stress, right? But there's also a phenomenon known as post-traumatic growth. And so often it is our most difficult experiences that put us in a crucible that transform us. I have grown the most from my most painful times. When I'm going through them, I'm not going to tell you that I enjoy them. But you want to allow pain to serve you. What happened to you? The pain, the hurt, the struggle? It didn't make you better. You made you better. The struggle didn't make you who you are. It's because of who you are that you were able to turn a struggle into opportunity. You chose growth over pain, to build character instead of walls, to expand your heart instead of hardening to the world. You kept loving, kept trusting. You chose resilience and vulnerability when it would have been a hell of a lot easier to shut down and shut it all out. 
you chose to remain kind and soft in the face of cruelty. The exact same cruelty that could have turned you into someone that you're not. And with that, let's give credit where credit's due. That's all you. You're stuck and unsure about what to do with your life? Stop overcomplicating it. Money, titles, and approval from others are the wages of being a person of value. Ask yourself one question. What problem do I care about solving? Because here's the truth. Money follows value, and value comes from solving real problems. So find something that bothers you, something you can't stop thinking about, and go all in on solving that. That's where fulfillment, success, and meaning are found. If you don't learn this and keep wandering aimlessly, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. So when you love yourself, you do better work, you eat better. When you love yourself, you install the habits of mastery. When you love yourself, you treat people with civility and politeness. When you love yourself, you don't give up on your mighty mission. When you love yourself, you celebrate your ambitions. When you love yourself, you walk your talk and you speak with your voice and you trust your innovation and you honor your creativity. Self-love is a huge generating force of world class. The path of personal development is befriending uncertainty. Almost all decisions that you make in the beginning, you have incomplete data and you have to make decisions anyways. And so it's growing comfortable with taking your best bad guess and being directionally correct rather than searching for a perfect answer because a perfect answer assumes perfect information, which you can only have after you begin. And so in some ways, making a decision is the perfect answer so that you can get the information to then improve the quality of the decision later. And I think that one loop is what a lot of people miss out on is that they spend, they obsess for years sometimes on the perfect pick, the perfect business, the perfect job, the perfect mate, when most of the times beginning each step illuminates the next step which means the information, the feedback that you get from walking gives you more about where to walk than trying to sit at the beginning in the darkness and pick a direction. The willingness to be disliked is a superpower. If you develop the willingness to be disliked, you will inevitably have the courage to do the hard things that most people are not willing to do. This will then imbue your life with a sense of meaning and importance. It will also lead to success that others will be too intimidated to go after. But I would go even further than this. I would argue that until you're comfortable with the disapproval of others, you are not truly a free individual yourself. You must develop the ability to be disliked in order to free yourself from the prison of other people's opinions. Learn to do what's right, even if others think it might be wrong. Learn to tolerate criticism and negative feedback because that's what will make you better. Learn to be laughed at, hated on and trolled because if you can become comfortable with the hate, you'll be f***ing unstoppable. It's like you, I was filled with anxiety and I still am filled with anxiety to this day. But I, I think the right thing to do is not to run away from the anxiety, but to lean into it and uh, channel it into pursuing with everything you got the things you're passionate about. And it may turn out in the end that your life will have unexpected chapters, but as long as you're chasing dreams and goals with absolute unwavering dedication, good stuff will come of it. We all get to choose. What hard are we gonna have? Are we gonna have the hard of creating and becoming and being a great example for everybody else, honoring the people who came before us and setting a great example for the people coming after us? Or are we gonna cruise? Or are we gonna coast? Or are we just gonna be another poor little me? Another person that dies with all the hopes and dreams and amazing ideas that could have helped people while you were here? Who says at the end of their life, I coulda, I shoulda, I wish I had. Are you gonna be the person that says at the end of their life, I f***ing did it? The greats do things when they don't always want to. 
And I think that's what separates good from great. Master self-discipline. Become the person that regardless of how you feel, you can consistently go through the motions. Be the person that you can count on. Do it because you said that you would, because it is what will get you closer to obtaining legacy. Operate like a finely tuned, highly efficient machine, continuously making improvements through trial and error. Do this until the day comes that you can operate optimally without even having to think about it, without any effort because you were just that good, that finely tuned. When you reach this level of performance, the rate at which you improve skyrockets exponentially and you will be soaring past the achievements that you once believed to be impossible. But you have to get over this first hump. Think of this as life or death because this is the difference between you continuing to be stuck in the cycle versus actually living the life that you dream of. Self-discovery is the path to self-mastery and true craftsmanship, daily practice, something you do every single day to fire up those neurons, you understand? This will help you realize your edge, what makes you unique, and give you the confidence to not give a damn because you know who you are. Because let me tell you something, you're gonna get a lot of flowers, you're gonna get a lot of praise, but you're gonna get hate too. It's better to be hated for who you truly are than adored for who you truly aren't. No amount of external approval will make up for the inevitable lack of fulfillment that comes from trying to be someone that you're not. True love and connection require authenticity. Without it, there's only dishonest attachment. You should be viewing every single thing that happens in your life as a learning experience. Every good thing you do, every bad thing you do, the things you do to people, the things people do to you. Regardless of the situation, there is always something embedded in there that you can use to make you better. And if you do that, if you view every single interaction, every single situation that you encounter as a learning experience, you will never lose because most people are just coasting through life, completely asleep at the wheel, not paying attention to anything that goes on, not looking for lessons, not trying to improve. And they view every single situation that they encounter as just what happens to them. And those people will always blame two things before they ever blame themselves. They will blame someone else or their circumstances. And if you can just skip those two and look for the thing that you could do better in every single situation, you will always win no matter what. All the worry, all the pressure and expectation that you're trying to live up to, where is it taking you? All the fake rules in your head that you're living by, what's the end goal? The imaginary milestones in your head are just that, imaginary. And think about it this way, you've already achieved goals that you once said would make you happy. So instead of predicating your happiness on these external achievements, become a person who is fully committed to working towards all the things that you want in life, regardless of timeline, and most importantly, enjoying the process. Chances are you're more likely to find the success that you want through the pursuit of happiness rather than happiness through the pursuit of success. Remember that one price to pay for everything and that includes inaction that includes not doing anything there's a consequence to pay for just sitting there in your thoughts in your feelings not running not chasing after you want not going after your dreams there's a consequence to listening to the opinions of people that don't even know what you have inside there's a consequence you better study consequences of people before you that didn't act on the things they wanted to truly act on there's a consequence so i weigh the consequences Life isn't forever. It finally comes to an end. One of the Beatles wrote, all things must pass. The sunrise doesn't last all day. Spring doesn't last all summer. The sunset doesn't last all night. We all have periods of time, periods of time, pieces of time. And when those pieces of time comes, what you've got to do is take advantage of each time that comes. At the longest, life is brief. At the longest, life is just a small period of time. Don't waste the chance. Don't let them all pass. Take advantage. 
Dreams require action, not permission. You need to go after everything that's in your heart today. You got to go ahead and say that today is day one of me going after everything that's supposed to come after me. The domino of today will set off a trigger that will bring everything into fruition. Your goals, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations. And when you increase your capacity, understand that you must also increase your tenacity. How bad do you want it? Because at every level, there's a new devil. But whatever devil that is assigned to you can't stop you. Eagles are often attacked by crows, but a crow can't stop an eagle from elevating. So what the eagle does, rather than match wits and try to fight a crow, it elevates above the level of the long capacity of the crow, because it knows that the crow can't roam where they go. You got to have the capacity to keep growing, the tenacity to never stop. So here I am, a speck on this little blue dot we call planet Earth. Because look at the opportunity I have. I'm alive. I can decide what I do, where I go, how much money I can make, how hard I work, who I surround myself with. I can choose who I want to be. Look, nobody said it was easy. There is no magic wand that just makes everything okay. To make life better, to make people not come after you and make you feel less than. But that's okay, because they don't control you. You are in control of you, completely. It's like my father says, you give life half a chance and it will survive. You all have way more than half a chance. So what are you going to do with it? The path you have chosen is going to be a difficult one. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. It's going to cost you your comfort zone and your sense of direction. It's going to cost you being liked and understood, but that doesn't matter. The people who are meant for you are going to meet you on the other side. All you're going to lose is what was built for a person you no longer are. Remaining attached to a life you're unhappy with is the greatest act of self-sabotage. And releasing it is what you must prepare for to truly be willing to see real change. Your future isn't waiting for you. It's not waiting on you to arrive. It's not waiting for you to thrive. It's waiting for you to create it. Dreams require action, and action requires permission from you and you alone. Speak to yourself. Now's the time. Now's the time to elevate not only your game, but your name, your frame, though your thought processes. There is absolutely nothing that you can't accomplish or do. Unless you never start, unless you never dream, unless you never believe, you can manifest the very best of you, but you got to believe it. That's why you ain't welcome when people test you. Because if you test me, you'll find out there's a better part of me. Test me, it brings out the best of me. Test me, and I will manifest everything I'm supposed to, because that is how diamonds are made. Pressure on them releases what they are. That's why you got to accept the fact that you are rare, you are valuable, you are gifted, you are good, your capacity is amazing. But you got to maintain your tenacity. There were many before us that had half, a quarter of what we have, that made something amazing of their lives. There are people flying that couldn't walk, people singing that couldn't breathe. And guess what? You're not what they told you you were. Only you can be put in a box if you let yourself get put in the box. Whatever they say about you is a reflection on them, not you. I'll say it again. What they say about you is a reflection on them, not you. You're not an imposter. You belong here. And so when I look up the sky and I tell myself, you're just one in a billion insignificant and I talk myself out of the contribution I, I go no 
Maybe I'm actually one in a billion. That unique thing that's independent to me. I know you want everything to happen right now. You may have been working for a very long time and at this point you feel like you have earned the result. But you have to understand that things aren't going to happen at the speed at which you think they should happen. Things are going to happen at the speed that they are supposed to happen. The only thing you can control are the inputs, the work, the hours, the blood, sweat and tears that you put into what you're trying to do. You don't get to control the output. Instead say, this is what I'm willing to do every single day until I get the result that I want. And I'm not willing to wait six months, one year, two years. I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. To get anything of value, you have to sacrifice. Do you know that the harder thing to do and the right thing to do are usually the same thing? Easy doesn't enter into grown-up life. Now, you're going to be disappointed. Let me put this in here. When this doesn't work out, you know, just as you've planned, you're going to be disappointed. But here's what you must learn to do as a leader. Learn to discipline your disappointment. Be disappointed, but don't let it kid you. You've just got to understand, sometimes the seed falls on shallow ground. And it didn't say what to do about the shallow ground. It just said, that's the way it is. Because you're sad, now you're going to make a bunch of bad decisions because you're sad. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You're sad. Okay. You get emotional sometimes. Okay. Got it. Now get control of your emotions and carry on with your life. And sometimes you're going to get hit with those waves and that's okay. I'm having an emotional moment right now. There's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. The other extreme is, oh, I'm letting my emotions run my life and I'm making a bunch of bad decisions, and my excuse is, well, you know, I lost some friends, or I had this traumatic experience happen to me. That's why I'm doing, that's just an excuse. And it's a very easy excuse, and you can't act like that. Your expectations define your happiness more than your circumstances. If you only wished to be happy, this could be easily accomplished, but we wish to be happier than other people, and this is always difficult, for we believe others are happier than they are. Because only doing the thing is doing the thing. When I say do, don't think, I don't mean you shouldn't think at all. I mean, of course, some thought is necessary, but don't let that thinking turn into overthinking. It's so easy to get caught up in planning and worrying that you never actually take the first step. It might not go as planned, and you may even mess it up. But that's part of the process. You try, you mess it up, you reassess, and then you go again. So let's just start, even if it feels messy, and you've got this. You can go from failure to success, but you can't go from excuses to success. Just always exceed X. Do more than what anyone else would ever expect out of you. That's who we are. I think everything about discipline, everything about discipline and every day, and every day, every day, like, you know, train, sleep, eat, repeat. It's have to become your lifestyle and everything here in mental. You know, everything about mental, you know, it's like when you become champion, what you feel like. And I said, no, in my mind, I was always champion. You are more powerful than you believe. If you were experiencing some sort of discomfort at the moment, whether that be stress, sadness or uncertainty, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, the power, the essence within you your soul will overcome this. You will prevail and rise above the unbearable state that you are currently in. And I understand that you may be asking when. When will you be alleviated from this discomfort? But you must know that regardless of when, the hurt that you feel right now serves no other purpose than to strengthen you. So whether it is today or tomorrow, every single moment that you sit with this, you are growing, becoming a version of yourself that is stronger and wiser than ever before. There may also be a part of you that says it will never end, that you will never find the answer, but you must know you always find the answer. 
I want you to imagine a bustling city undergoing a grand renovation. Streets that once thrummed with daily life are now cloaked in scaffolding and echo with the sounds of construction. Familiar landmarks fade into the mist of renovation. The city's pulse seems to falter as old paths are closed and the landscape shifts. Yet this tumultuous symphony of transformation is not mere noise. As the dust settles, the city will emerge not just altered, but reborn. If you're thinking, what's this got to do with me? Then listen to this. In your journey of self-improvement, you might find that your personal renovation disrupts established routines and, most especially, relationships. When this happens, I want you to remember that city. It evolved to better serve its inhabitants, even if they didn't realize it. Your growth is reshaping your life to support new and improved opportunities. This isn't an anomaly. It's a natural consequence of your progress. Growth doesn't come from nowhere. It's not like you wake up one day and you're a new person. Growth is gradual, and the potential to be your greatest self has always existed inside of you. You're not suddenly a new person for going through change. You're just more evolved. What happens is that with time, you learn to embrace everything about you, and you start to show the world who you truly were all along. If you want the future to change for you, you've got to change. If you don't change, the next six years of your life is going to be just like the last six. You'll still be behind on your bills. You'll still be behind on your promises. If you will change, everything will change for you. If you will get better, everything will get better for you. If you'll change your philosophy, if you'll change your habits, if you'll refine your thinking, if you'll change and accept some new disciplines, if you'll turn the corner where you've been in the past, go for a new life for the future, all kinds of remarkable things will happen for you if you will change. Biggest mistake a person can do is to give up. You might not reach the best, best version of yourself in this lifetime, but a better one than you are right now. Remember, you won't get everything you want. Simply sometimes it hails on your crop and rains on your parade. It's that kind of planet. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it. Handle it. Thoughts aren't true. Feelings don't require actions. Things aren't good or bad, they just are. Our greatest enemy is ignorance. To change your life, change your surroundings. Our actions, not our pasts, define who we are. You can't change what's going on around you until you start changing what's going on inside you. Strength doesn't come from the things that you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't do. Start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything matters. Everything's important. Good phrase to take home. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. If you hadn't thought of it before, here it is. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. You see, without goals, you're easily stopped because you don't know what you want. First of all, decide exactly what you want. Most people never do that. Second of all, he said, determine the price you're going to have to pay to get it and then start paying it. When you're dedicated to the dream, you stay committed past the inconvenience. When you're dedicated to the dream, you stay consistent past the challenges. When you're dedicated to the dream, you keep stepping up no matter what obstacles show up. Do you feel me? Do you hear me? Do you understand me? When the support said no, my dedication said yes. When my desire said no, my dedication said yes. My dedication was like, forget how you feel and remember what's real. Let me be straight up with you. Feelings don't fulfill missions. Dedication does. It's time to let go of fear about your skeletons. 
because the truth is every person walking has one in them. No one is allowed to live life without trials and embarrassment, but you can turn shame into a strong name. You just have to remember that you're not framed by what your past was. You are framed by the way you allow yourself to be seen today. First step to changing your life is believing in yourself. You have to believe within the whole core of your being that you can achieve this thing that is new, scary, and something you've never done before. But to do that, you have to have courage. And to have courage, you have to have belief. So what does it really mean to believe in yourself? That means waking up every single day, looking yourself in the mirror and telling yourself that you can do it. That means undoing years of trauma that you've been through. That means doing the inner work to change how your brain works, reprogramming yourself. I'm gonna ask you today, what are you willing to do to step forward with courage? My good friend, James Dixon says, it's that midnight calling that happens. And are you willing to step into that calling? It's challenging. I love, love what uh, Henry David Thoreau said. He said, you know, if one walks confidently towards their dream at common hours, you'll come to an invisible barrier, but with courage. And remember, courage is not the absence of fear. It's how we deal with fear. You step through and on the other side of that, you find new universal laws available to you. And all of a sudden it's like magic. Things open up for you. It takes such great faith to keep taking those steps. Martin Luther King said, true faith is when you take a step on a staircase and you can't see the whole staircase, but every step gives you a new vision that can guide you and lead you. That there's something greater within you. And when you have that fear, can I do this? And can you step forth in your faith, in your strength? There's so much available to you to do. And when you live that way, oh my gosh, every day is a brand new day to see, hey, what can I do today to bring more fruit to this world? What can I do to help myself move forward? And if you honor that, if you got 1% better today, think what that means if you challenge yourself to be 1% better each and every day where you end up. This is a gift that you can absolutely be. Today is the day that you can change the perception of the entire world by believing that no matter how bad things get, the world can feel like it's on top of you. The day is coming where you're back on top of the world. But you gotta believe that greatness is something that you exude from the inside out. Stop having doubts, stop thinking you need to be validated. You are already valid. In fact, you are more than enough. You were born enough, you will be enough, and you've always been enough. You just got to have enough of believing to sustain you when it feels like giving up. No matter what you are going through in life, how sad you are, how much pain you're feeling, the trauma that you're going through, you are strong enough to see another day. Life can be heavy, especially if you try to carry it all at once. Part of growing up and moving into new chapters of your life is about catch and release. What I mean by that is knowing what things to keep and what things to release. Here's a qualifying phrase. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one-tenth of it. And the other nine-tenths went down the drain. Not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. You are your own worst enemy. You waste precious time dreaming of the future instead of engaging in the present. Since nothing seems urgent to you, you're only half involved 
in what you do. We're a very creative species, right? We have language, we have consciousness, we have immense powers. Those powers developed under the pressures of necessity, of having to get things done, of having to survive in a very brutal, ruthless world. And under the pressure, we had to think, we had to be creative, we had to be inventive, we had to be strategic. The human brain evolved under immense amounts of pressure. So in your brain, when you're feeling that barometric pressure, it's like, I gotta get this done. You work like a fiend. Energy, your whole body responds. You, you accomplish things that would normally take you months, you do it in days because you feel that pressure. You take away that pressure and you don't know what to do. Wander around, you're lost, you have no energy, you have no focus. So your brain needs pressure. And stress and pressure is not a bad thing. We have this thing where we feel like stress is bad. It's bad for you, bad. You know, you need to relax, man, you need to chill. Stress will kill you. No, being bored will kill you. Not having anything to do will kill you is much more dangerous than stress. What you think about is like this sail on the sailboat. No matter how the storm blows or how the winds blow, if you've got a place you want to arrive, uh, you can't arrive there by cursing the contrary winds. Right. You arrive there by adjusting the set of the sail. Right. And he said, that's your thinking, that's ideas, that's information. And if you're short on that, uh, sure enough, it's gonna cause you difficulty in the future. The hero is the person who confronts horrible, chaotic potential and tames it and makes something of it, right? That's the fundamental human story. But the problem is, is that you have to face what you don't want to face in order to fix it. Yeah. And, and so you look at all the things about yourself that need to be burned off, that need to be dispensed with. And that man, especially at the beginning, especially if you're screwed up, that may be like 95% of you just has to go up in flames. And it's painful. Even some of that stuff that you have to burn off doesn't want to die. And it'll scream in agony while you're burning it off. It's not pleasant. But if you know that you're the thing that can transcend your problems, most fundamentally, if you know you're the thing that, if it faces the problems, can transcend them, then you have the faith that would enable you to take stock of who you are. Are you actually trying as hard as you can, or are you just trying hard enough to be able to signal to other people that you're trying as hard as you can? Are you taking every single opportunity that you have to sharpen your sword, to get better, to make a little bit of progress? Or are you really doing like 20% of what you could actually do, but it's just enough so that everybody else thinks, oh wow, he works hard. Doing the work to maintain other people's idea of you is not the same thing as doing the work to produce the result. Because in order to produce the result that you probably want it's going to take a lot of work that people will never see anybody can do the look at me work the hey check me out I work hard work but in reality it's the quiet work that actually wins so the thing is when you're, you want to build something something great uh, it's not easy to do and when you're doing something that's not easy to do you're not always enjoying it I don't love every day of my job I don't think every day brings me joy nor does joy have to be the definition of a good day. And so I think that, that what people misunderstand is, is somehow the best jobs are the one that brings you happiness all the time. I, I don't think that that's right. You have, to, you, have to, you have to suffer, you have to struggle, you have to endeavor, you have to do those hard things and work through it in order to really appreciate what you've done. Pressure is a privilege. That's what makes you. And mistakes are not failures. Do not ever perceive a mistake as a failure. Perceive it as feedback. Everything is feedback. Pay attention. Be curious. Be nimble. Don't take things personally. And never lose sight of your dream. Struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. 
You earn it and win it in every generation. Few things will eat at you more than having a dream and doing nothing about it. Not only do you push yourself away from the life you could be living, but you ruin your self-respect and you show yourself that you don't value the things that you want. You give yourself permission to be complacent and you show yourself that it's okay to break the promises you make to yourself. But it's not, and you know it. Do whatever it takes to do whatever it is you know you need to do. Don't make excuses because few things have a greater price than inaction. Think of what failure looks like and do everything in your power to avoid it. Are you going to regret not pushing yourself today? There are no excuses around here. Get it done.